Back then, my name was Chen Shen, and I was a young police academy student. This story unfolded after my grandmother's passing, marking the second time in my life I encountered such a spine-chilling situation. The first time I encountered a ghost was when I was just six years old, living in my grandmother's house. She was a well-known shaman in our ancestral village, and I grew up mostly under her care since my parents were often away on business. That night, I nearly lost my life. Had it not been for my grandmother's intervention, I might have become the victim of that terrifying entity. People say there are two things that unsettle the human heart, a diagnosis from a doctor and an urgent call from your parents in the dead of night. I was at the police academy in the provincial capital, hundreds of kilometers away from home, when I received a trembling call from my mother in the middle of the night. She barely got the words out, telling me that my grandmother was critically ill and urging me to come home to see her one last time. Without hesitation, I took leave and hired a car to rush back to my ancestral home. As a young child, with my parents frequently busy with their business and seldom at home, I was left in my grandmother's care. Consequently, I was raised under her nurturing and developed a deep emotional bond with her. In our village, my grandmother's reputation was profound. Revered as a shaman, she possessed the ability to communicate with the spiritual world. Whenever evil struck a household, they would seek her assistance. Whenever a child fell ill with strange symptoms, they too would turn to my grandmother for help. During my time living with her, her doorstep was always bustling with people seeking assistance. She always helped without asking for anything in return, only accepting tokens of gratitude after the issue was resolved. If the supplicants were too poor to offer payment, she never minded. My grandmother often said, after death, souls are reborn and one must accumulate virtue. Helping others is a way of accumulating virtue, which in turn helps oneself. She helped countless people and her reputation in our village was immense. In my memory, she was a mysterious and remarkable figure, always finding solutions to even the strangest or most bizarre problems. Though I was very young at the time and many memories are hazy, as time has passed, much has been forgotten. However, the ghostly encounter I had at the age of six, even after more than a decade, remains vividly etched in my memory. It was on the 15th day of the seventh lunar month. I was just six years old at the time. The 15th day of the seventh lunar month, known as the Hungry Ghost Festival, is popularly believed to be the day when the gates of the spirit world open, allowing ghosts to roam freely. However, as a young child, I was oblivious to these beliefs, and the day was just like any other to me. That evening, as I was playing alone in my grandmother's yard, I suddenly noticed a little boy on the road gesturing to me. He appeared to be about my age, with short hair and wearing a blue shirt. Due to my grandmother's special status, the village children were wary of me and hesitant to play with me. Having spent many lonely days, I didn't hesitate to run towards the boy when I saw a peer beckoning me. The boy had a pale face and a small mole on his cheek. As I approached him, he turned and started walking in a certain direction without a word. I followed him for a while. The boy led the way, and I trailed behind, heading towards the mountain. Time seemed to stretch on, and eventually, we arrived under a large pagoda tree, where the boy stopped. Why are you following me? The boy still had his back to me, his voice ghostly and devoid of emotion. At that moment, I didn't know what to say. It felt as though I was being guided by some force, unable to resist. I'm going home now, the boy said softly, then vanished. After the boy disappeared, I came to my senses. By then, it was completely dark. I looked around and realized I was in the midst of a vast mountain range, surrounded by tall trees and silence with no human sound to be heard. A six-year-old child, abandoned in the wilderness late at night, my only reaction was to cry. I didn't dare wander off and could only squat under the large pagoda tree where the boy had disappeared, crying. I cried and cried, not knowing how much time had passed. As the night grew darker, I gradually lost consciousness. When I woke up again, I was back at my grandmother's house. The entire process was so mysterious and eerie. This story becomes increasingly chilling as the truth unfolds, sending shivers down the spine. After I lost consciousness, my grandmother and other adults started to worry. 
They searched all around the village but couldn't find any trace of me. Later, a little girl told my grandmother she saw me entering the mountains alone. However, as you've described, the real issue was with the so-called little boy, who was actually a ghost. The adults went into the mountains late at night to look for me and eventually found me unconscious under that large pagoda tree. They tried to wake me, but my grandmother, sensing something was amiss, believed I was under the influence of an evil spirit. She took me home and performed a spirit communication and exorcism ritual, which ultimately saved my soul. When I woke up, I described the little boy I saw, including his appearance and clothing. Upon hearing this, my uncle mentioned that a child from a neighboring village had gone missing a few days earlier, and he bore a striking resemblance to the boy I described. That child was also around six or seven years old, had a small mole on his cheek, and was wearing blue clothes when he disappeared. He vanished while playing in his village, and his parents had even filed a missing person report. The whole village was shocked by the incident. It was incredible, as if a sinister event had woven together the mysteries of evil spirits and a missing child. The conclusion of this story is both shocking and sorrowful. When my grandmother had someone bring the photo of the missing child, and I confirmed that the so-called little boy was him, the situation became even more eerie. My grandmother's worries sent chills down everyone's spine. Then, the adults found the body of the little boy under the large pagoda tree in the mountains. This discovery caught the attention of the police, and an investigation quickly unfolded, revealing the grim truth behind this horrifying case. Shockingly, the little boy's uncle, a pedophile, had lured him into the mountains with snacks but accidentally caused his death. He buried the boy's body under the pagoda tree, attempting to cover up his crime. I couldn't comprehend why the missing child would choose to come to me, leading me to his burial site, and why I was the only one who could see him. These were unexplainable mysteries. My grandmother's amulet and healing rituals helped me, but they also left me physically vulnerable, needing special care and nurturing. The love and care from my parents and the training at the police academy helped me regain my health. However, the so-called little boy remains a mystery in this story and my hope is that he has since been reincarnated and no longer haunts me. My longing and reflections on my grandmother resonate deeply, making these memories so significant to me. Now, back in my ancestral home, facing the final moments with my mother and grandmother, a surge of emotions overwhelms me. My mother's emotions and words express her love and concern. I prepare to approach my grandmother's bedside to listen to her words and last wishes to provide her with my final companionship. It's a moment filled with emotion and also an expression of deep respect and love for my grandmother. The room was filled with the familiar scent of incense, characteristic of my grandmother's home, as if time had reverted to my childhood. Since leaving for the police academy, I had few opportunities to return, but the aroma still brought a sense of warmth and closeness. The last time I saw my grandmother was during the previous winter vacation. Busy with internships at the academy, I hadn't been able to visit for a while. Reflecting on this, I felt a pang of guilt for not being more devoted. My grandmother had always been in good health, and I never imagined she would pass so suddenly. Perhaps that's just life. We never truly know when the final farewell will come. I sat beside her bed. Her complexion was poor, her hands thin and bony with age, her face marked with lines of worry. Perhaps she had unfinished desires or worries, causing her brow to furrow deeply. I reached out and gently held her hand, softly calling her name. My grandmother's response brought tears to my eyes. Slowly, she opened her eyes and seeing me, a flicker of relief passed through her gaze. Grandma, I'm back, I whispered, wiping away my tears. Chen Shen. She attempted to sit up and I quickly helped her, propping her against the bed. It's good you're back, she smiled at me, a smile filled with warmth and joy, but one that also weighed heavily on my heart. Grandma, you'll get better. I'm here now, and I'll stay with you for a few days. I tried to comfort her, but my tears flowed uncontrollably. Chen Shen, I know my body. Her expression suddenly turned serious, and I froze. Seeing my puzzled look, she sighed deeply and gently stroked my head, asking, Chen Shen, do you believe in ghosts? Having encountered the so-called little boy ghost, at the age of six, of course, I believed. 
My grandmother was aware of my childhood experiences, so I was confused as to why she would ask such a question at this time. 